Liz from Custom Crazed and today I'm going to give you some ideas on how to make cheap, quick, upcycled bloomers for costuming. Why bloomers you might say? Well, if you have girls who twirl, they might show their panties. Bloomers are one of those base garments that you can really never have too many of. I have costumed large cast high school shows and when you have girls on stage who are wearing full skirts or hoop skirts especially and they're twirling and they're kicking, there's always a chance that those skirts are going to fly up and the audience is going to get an unexpected surprise. This is especially true for your principal characters. If you costume for a stage like I do, your main characters have their feet at about the head level of the people in the front couple rows. If you're dancing and your skirt pulls up, those audience members can kind of get an unexpected view sometimes. That's why I like to use bloomers. After you've got your supplies and done this a few times, a pair of bloomers like this can take you maybe 15 or 20 minutes to make. I like to pick up the base supplies for this and make them whenever I have a little bit of time or my pile of white pants gets tall. For my purposes, I don't really care about the style of bloomers. If you are into historical reenactment or you want to be really time period correct, I suggest you Google the history of women's underwear and you'll be able to find out exactly what style is appropriate for your time period. Are you ready to make some bloomers? Let's go! First we'll need to collect supplies. We'll want some kind of white thrifted pants. Scrubs work great. You'll want something that has ruffles, lace, or eyelet, like an old pillow sham. Some scissors, something for a drawstring, probably some bias tape, and maybe some elastic. The first thing we'll do is cut the trim off of the pillow sham. I'm going to use a pinking shears to help decrease the amount of fraying. I'm just going to cut around the edge, leaving enough of a seam allowance that I'll be able to zigzag it onto my bloomers later on. Next, I'm going to cut the waistband off of the pants. If your scrubs or pants don't have a heavy waistband, you don't need to cut it off. You can just leave it on. But in this case, I'm going to cut it off. I'm using my pinking shears until I get to the pockets and it gets a little thick and then I switch over to my regular scissors. Next we're going to have to decide what to do with the pockets. I have some simple side seam pockets so I'm going to fold these out lay it flat, and then just simply cut them off. If you have patch pockets, you can decide whether it's worth picking all that stitching off or just leaving them because they'll never be seen. Once they're cut off, later when I'm at the sewing machine, I'm going to sew that pocket hole shut. Next, I'm going to cut the pants off to about the length that I want my finished bloomers to be, minus any trim. I'm going to cut one leg off at a time as it's a lot easier to cut this way and I have more control. Next thing we're going to work on is the casing at the top of the pants. We can do this three different ways. Using a strip of scrap fabric, folding the top of the pants over, or using bias tape. I'm going to use strips of fabric and I'm using waste fabric from the center of the pillow sham. I am cutting my strips two inches wide. I want to have the width of the casing plus the seam allowance multiplied by two because we're going to be folding it over. You can cut or you can tear your fabric as long as your fabric is on the straight of grain. This is a really easy way to make long strips. Are we ready to sew? The first thing we're going to do is to sew our waistband strips together. If you have a long piece of fabric, you won't have to do this, but I'm just using salvage scraps, so I'm doing that. Next, I'm going to stitch the pocket shut. Then I fold the waistband in half, 
and line it up on the right side of the fabric of the pants and stitch it to the top. After your waistband is stitched on, you can finish that seam if you want. Today I'm just going to zigzag the seam to the top from the outside. You can also do this from the inside, whatever you want. The next step is to sew the trim onto the bottom. I'm using my free arm and I'm zigzagging my cutoff eyelet to the bottom of my bloomers. I decided that I had enough trim that I added a second row of eyelet and I am sewing on some satin ribbon at the same time. Next, I want to put my drawstring in my waistband. So I put a pin on the end of my drawstring and I find my waistband opening and I'm going to thread it through. You can also use elastic. Because I work with high school kids who like to pull their drawstrings out, I am going to secure it with a little bit of stitching in the center back. If you want your bloomers to be just straight on the bottom, you can be done now. I'm going to put some elastic around the bottom, so I'm going to use some bias tape to make a casing to run some elastic through. This might have been easier to do a little bit earlier in the process, but I'm doing it now and it'll work just fine. I just need to make sure that I don't catch any of that eyelet when I'm sewing on the bias tape. I will run rows of stitching along both edges right next to the edge. Here we are, the pants are finished, ready to go on stage. Here are some pictures of my female cast members in Cinderella with their bloomers on. You can see how their skirts flip up as they dance and how the audience sits at skirt level. You can also see how the bloomers add to the historic feel of the show. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and I hope you are ready to go out and make some bloomers. If you're interested in more information, you can find it at my blog at www.costumecrazed.me and you can find some of my products on Etsy. Thanks for watching and happy costuming.